Hey there guys, it's Amit and you're watching DevDreamer. In this video, we're taking a look at the CSS animation property. CSS animations can be used to animate our elements, creating some really cool effects, and it's all done using pure CSS, so there's no JavaScript involved here. So in this video, we're going to be covering the various animation properties and see how they all fit together. We'll do this by building three little animations. So first we'll take this square here and animate things such as the color, the shape, and of course the position as well. This will be a nice, simple introduction to the CSS animation property. Next, we'll build something a little bit more complex, this uh, animated pattern here, which can be used, for example, as a loading screen animation. And finally, we'll look at building this Super Mario animation with the animated question block and coin. If you're not already, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and hit that bell notification so you're notified as soon as new content goes up. And of course, give this video a like and a share. So without further ado, let's see what the CSS animation property is all about. Okay, so for our first animation then, let's take a look at our files. In our HTML file, we have a simple empty div. In our CSS file, we've got the styling for that div, which is basically an equal width and height of 100 pixels, background color of red, and position of relative. Okay, so let's take a look at how to animate this. First, we give our property an animation name. So do that by doing animation hyphen name. And you can call this pretty much whatever you want. Let's just call it square. Let's also specify an animation duration, which specifies how long we want this animation to run for, and let's go for four seconds. Now, CSS animations work hand in hand with the at keyframes property. Keyframes are simply a set of rules that specify what properties should be animated and how. And the way that you link these two, your element and the keyframe rules, is by the animation name. So we just take square and paste this in here. And so now, any rules that we add in here will apply to this element, this square here. Now all animations will have a beginning animation state and an ending animation state. And there are two main ways to do this. The first is we can say from, and then curly braces. Then on a new line, we can say to. So let's say for example, we wanted to animate this square here from a background color of red to a background color of blue. And so now you can see this animates from a background color of red to blue. Let's refresh that again, from red to blue. And that animation runs over a duration of four seconds. But what if you wanted to do more? What if you wanted to specify more than just these two rules here? Well, the other way that we can do this is by using percentages. So from becomes 0% and to becomes 100%. And in between these, we can add add a few more. This can be 25%, this can be 50%, and this one 75%. So the best way to look at this is as a lifeline of your animation. This is the beginning and this is the end. This is what happens when it's 25% of the way through. This is what happens when it's 50% of the way through. In our case, this will be two seconds. Okay, half of four seconds is two. These are the rules for 75% and finally 100%. So let's just change these up. Let's just say, uh, let's go for lime. Let's go for dodge blue. And let's go for, let's go for orange. Let's go for orange red actually. Okay, so now if I save it, take a look at our square. You can see that it animates through our colors over four seconds. Let's now update our keyframe so we get our desired animation. And let's just take a look at our updated keyframes. So essentially what's happening here is the square will be moving around just like we saw at the beginning, changing color as it goes. And also at 50%, it will change into a circle as well. So let's just refresh this and take a look. Okay, so as you can see, our element moves around the screen, changing shape and color as it goes. Let's now take a look at what other animation properties we can specify. We can also say what type of movement we want, and this is specified with animation timing function. That is right there. And again, you got the usual ones, ease, easing out, linear. We're gonna go for linear. We can also choose to add a delay at the beginning of our animation. So animation happen delay, and let's just say, two seconds. So the animation will have a two second delay before beginning. We can also say how many times we want the animation to play by doing animation iteration count. So by default, it's just one. We can also specify a specific number like two, three, four, five, or you can just do infinite and this will play infinitely. I'm just gonna leave it blank for now and we'll, uh, we'll come back to this. Another thing we can add is the animation direction. So by default, this is going forwards or normal. You can also choose to play in reverse. This plays it backwards. Alternate plays the animation forward first and then backwards. And finally, alternate reverse. The animation is played backwards first and then forwards. And for this example, we're gonna choose alternate. So the animation will play forwards first and then backwards. 
We can also specify animation fill mode and what this basically does is it specifies a style when the animation is not playing. So it could be before it starts, after it ends or both. So for example by default, let's just uh, let's just get this in, so animation fill mode. So by default then it's set to none. So what this will do is the animation will not apply any styles to the element before or after it's executing. We've got forwards where the element will keep the style from the very last keyframe, the 100% keyframe. We can set the fill mode to backwards where the element will get the style that is set by the first keyframe or 0%. And finally we've got both where the animation will retain the rules for both forwards and backwards extending the animation properties in both directions. Now for this example we're going to choose backwards as we want to get the style value of the first keyframe because we'll be moving in an alternate direction and finally the last animation property is the animation play state which basically specifies whether the animation is playing or paused. So animation hyphen play state and of course we're going to set this to running. We don't need to set this because this is what it's set to by default but as it's a tutorial we'll go through all the animation properties. Okay, so the only thing left to do then is to specify the iteration count, which is going to be infinite. And now you can see our animation is playing. So it goes forwards and then it goes backwards because we have animation direction alternate and running just as we expected. And as you probably guessed, we can specify all of this on a single line. So there are eight animation properties in total. So I can get quite messy. So let's just uh, comment this out and we'll look at doing this on a single line. So animation has stopped now because we've uh, commented this up. And let's just say animation. And the order is actually the same order I've put it in here. So it's the name first, so we'll say square. Then it's duration, as was four seconds. And then it was timing function, as was linear. Then it was the delay, we have two seconds. The iteration count, as was gonna go on forever and ever, so it's infinite. The direction was gonna be alternate. Um, the fill mode, backwards. And finally, the play state was running. Again, you don't have to do the play state because by default it is um, running forwards. Okay, and there you see our animation is running just as before. Okay, brilliant. Now let's take a look at how to animate the loading screen animation. Okay, so let's take a look at our files. In our HTML file, we have this div with the ID of circle, which is uh, this circle here. And inside that, we have div with the ID of square, which represents this square here. Let's take a look at our CSS. So we have the styling for the circle and the square, and each of these also has their keyframes. So keyframes of circle relates to the circle, and keyframes of square relates to the uh, ID of square. Let's clear this out, and let's look at doing this all again. Okay, so first let's take the div with the ID of circle. Let's give it a width of 200 pixels, and a height of 200 pixels as well. Let's give it a border that is 15 pixels, solid and red. Okay, there we have it right there. Let's put it in the middle by doing margin zero auto. And move it down from the top slightly by doing margin top 25%. Now we want to give this a display of flex because we want to center align the square that's going to go inside this. Um, so we'll do justify content center and also align items center as well. That will center the, uh, the square that goes in there. And let's turn this into a circle by doing border hyphen radius and that's going to be 50 percent okay so it turns into a circle let's now add our animation properties and we'll do this on a single line so let's first name it we'll call it circle the duration of this is going to be two seconds it's going to go on forever so we'll do infinite and we'll set the animation fill mode as forwards okay perfect now let's do the keyframes for this so we're going to do at keyframes and it's called circle Let's just do our percentages, so it's going to be 0%. And let's just copy and paste this through. This is going to be 25, 50, 75, and 100. In here, for our beginning animation state, we're going to say border color red and transform scale 1. For 25%, we're going to say border color gold and transform 1.1. As you can see, the animation has started now. Uh, for 50%, we're going to change the border color this time to lime and increase the scale to 1.3. And for 75%, it will be border color dodger blue, scale 1.1. So we're now bringing that circle back down again. And finally, for the final animation state, we'll set this to border color purple and transform scale back to 1. Okay, so there we have it. We have the animating circle. Now let's take a look at creating the spinning square in the middle of this. So let's do div, an ID of square 
For this, let's give it a width and height of 75 pixels. We'll say border, five pixels, solid. And we're gonna look for this lime green color. That's what we'll start off as. Let's now add the animations. So again, to clear it on a single line, this is gonna be called square. That's the animation name. It's gonna have a duration of two seconds. Again, it's gonna be infinite. The timing function is gonna be ease in out. And finally, we wanna say that the direction is gonna be alternate reverse. Let's add the keyframes. And the animation name is square. Let's copy this. Let's now add our percentages and just quickly walk through this. So the first animation state is transform rotate zero degrees. And we go through, change the color from aqua to coral to yellow. We increase the board width as well from 10 pixels, 20 pixels to 40 pixels. And then finally, in the final animation state there, we do a rotation of 360 degrees and the board width we set to five pixels. And this is what we get. We get an alternating spinning square inside a circle and the board width changes as well. Brilliant. Let's now take a look at our final animation example, which is the Super Mario coin box. Okay, so for our final animation example, we're going to look at animating this classic sprite from the Super Mario games. As you can see, the coin box is moving up and down, and the coin itself moves up as it rotates and then disappears. Let's take a look at our files. In our HTML file, we have a div with the ID of container, in that we have our Super Mario image, and then we have the div with the ID of block container, and inside that we have our block, which is uh, this block here, and the coin, which is the coin. Let's take a look at our CSS file. Okay, so we're styling the container and the block container as well as Mario, but the main thing for us is going to be the block and the coin. So the block has an animation of jump and the coin has an animation of coin, and these are the relevant keyframes as well. Let's just get rid of these here. If I can highlight them properly. There we go. And let's take a look at how to uh, how to do this. So, okay, so first then let's take the ID of block and let's style this. We'll give it a width of 100 pixels. Z index of two and an opacity of one. Let's also style the coin as well. So hashtag coin. Let's give ourselves some space here as well. Let's move this up. Okay, and for this we'll give this a width of 70 pixels. Z index of one because we want this to be placed behind the coin. Let's give this a position of relative because we want to move this from the right. And we want to move it by 85 pixels. Okay, so now it's behind uh, that block there. We'll say bottom 90 pixels. So move it from the bottom by 90 pixels because that's where we want it to begin. And now we can start adding the animations to them. So let's do the block first. And again, we'll declare it on a single line. So we're going to call this jump. It's going to run for 0 0.6 seconds. We'll make it linear, infinite and we'll add alternate to this as well. Let's now set the coin animation properties. So we'll say again, animation called coin. This will be 0 0.9 seconds. Again, this will be linear and infinite. And finally, we'll say forwards. And let's now add their rules by doing the keyframes. So we'll do the block first. So at keyframes and we'll call it jump. And this is only going to have three animation states. So let's say 0%. Let's copy this for 50 and 100. Okay. And for zero, we want to say transform, translate y zero pixels. So it's going to stay exactly where it is to begin with. Then at 50%, we want to animate this to go up by minus 10 pixels. That's what it's doing now. And finally, for the ending animation state, we'll say transform, translate zero pixels. Okay. The last thing we need to do is animate this coin. So for this, we're going to say at keyframes coin. And again, this is going to have three animation states. Okay, so let's just add these in. For the first animation state, we're going to have transform translate y zero pixels. So this is where it's going to start. Rotate zero degrees and opacity one. Then at the halfway point, we're going to say transform translate y minus 100 pixels, which moves it up. We're going to rotate it as well by 100 degrees along the y axis, which is why it's rotating there. And we're going to set the opacity to one, which is why it fades out. And finally, then we're going to set transform translate y to minus 100 pixels, rotate y to 360 degrees and opacity to zero. And there you have it, guys. That is how to animate the Super Mario coin block. Okay guys, so that's how to use the CSS animation property. If you found this video useful, don't forget to smash that like button down below. And if you think it will help others, give it a share on your social media accounts. 
Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification so you're notified as soon as new content goes up. Get practicing, and as always, I'll see you on the next one.